everyone, welcome back to What's Sewing On. I am so excited about this week's project. I have been planning it for a while now and it just so happens that it fits perfectly with a collaboration that's going on with fellow costumers. The collaboration is called Home for the Holidays 2020 and I will link that playlist below so you can go check out everybody else's submissions. My parents got this amazing Singer sewing machine from our neighbors years ago. The original owners are May and Boyd and they unfortunately passed away but she was an amazing lady. She made all of her own clothes all of Boyd's clothes on this machine and probably others her whole life. So I know this machine works and I know it works well, but I've never used it before. So that's going to be a big challenge, but I'm really excited to give it a shot anyways. The dress I'm going to be making is Vogue 9127. It is an original 1939 design. So I'm going to be making a dress from 1939 on a vintage Singer 1939 sewing machine. I'm so excited. This dress is beautiful. It can go short sleeve or long. I'm gonna do the long sleeve. I love the swan neck detail. There is some embroidery along with it. There is a cute little belt and I'm so excited to have a dress that looks like this. I'm dressed in my comfy driving clothes because my parents live a few hours away. So I'm going to get in the car. I'm going to go down there, show you guys the fabric, start cutting, and then I'm going to show you this sewing machine. This video isn't going to go into a lot of detail about the machine because I'm going to do a separate video that actually highlights the machine. I'll show you all of the pieces, all the parts, the manuals, the receipts, all of that stuff. This video, I think I'm just going to focus on the dress because I think it'll be enough work. So I'm going to jump in the car, head down there, so I will see you at my parents' house. <laughs> stronger. Come over here then. I see you sneaking over. There you go. Sit down. I know I'm in front of your favorite window. What did we do? Whose idea was this? Did you plan this? Sit or leave? You have two options. Good boy. I think I bit a little bit more than I could chew on this project. First off, using fabric that I've never used before, which is obviously common for me, but this material is very coarse, so cutting it was even difficult, snipping through the coarse fabric. And then I knew it was going to fray, and it is fraying, so I already knew that was gonna happen. I haven't even cut into the velvet yet, which I am terrified about doing because I feel like velvet is going to be super messy. Then using a pattern that was designed in 1939, I've read through these instructions, I don't know, at least you drooled on my pattern. And there's a lot of little pieces that I'm just like, what? It's, I think it's more of an intermediate to advanced pattern, especially because they lay everything over top instead of sewing it together and flipping inside out. So that's also very strange to me because I've never used that technique before. Then using a 1939 sewing machine, which I've never used before. I'm terrified of it. It doesn't even have like, how am I gonna know what five eighths is? It doesn't even have like the measurements like my little brother does. And then sewing at my parents' house. So I had to bring everything that I needed. If I forget one thing, I'm not gonna be using it. So it's like not my space to sew in. So it's just really weird. And I really want this dress to turn out because I just love the look of it. And I'm really hoping that this 1939 sewing machine can do an okay job, AKA I can do a good job. So I have all the pieces cut out. I'm gonna lay them all out and then I'm just going to start putting it together. Luckily, there is no darts. The only darts in this pattern are on the sleeve and they're just three straightforward darts so they don't look like they're gonna be that difficult. Everything else is just piecing together, which seems so easy. <laughs> someone's here. So I'm going to start putting these pattern pieces together and I will check back in in a little while. I don't know how to open this. Oh, 
to button. new style from 1939. It's called embroidery. What happened? Man, it's hard without like the like five eighths. Oh. Uh -huh. <laughs> like I'm so crooked. Maybe I'll put a little piece of tape or something because this is impossible. I think there is like a foot something, yeah, right here that has it. I don't even want to start f around with this thing. <laughs> Freaking funny for in here. So I have quite a bit done so far. I have the back put on to the side sections. It doesn't seem like a lot, but using this machine, oh boy. I'm surprised I have this much done. It's quite different using this knee pedal instead of a foot pedal. It's not something I'm used to, so I'm going a lot slower than I normally do. But it's still coming together, so I'm really happy about that. Before I finish today, I want to get the front of the dress put on with the collar, the belt. So then tomorrow all I'll have to do is the sleeves, 
all of the buttonholes, which is going to take forever because I don't know how to use a button attachment for this one. So I don't know if I want to try it. I have to maybe play around with it and see or just do them all by hand. But there is close to 11 buttonholes to do, which is kind of insane. So we'll see what I do with that. For the belt and with the collar, and I think I might do cuffs. I have this old thrifted velvet skirt. It looks like it was handmade. It is beautiful, but there is a couple marks on it. So I'm thinking that's why it was probably thrifted because it is not in perfect condition. But I think cutting out around those little damaged sections, making the collar, the cuffs, and covering buttons, I think it's going to look beautiful together. So I'm gonna get cutting this up and I will check back in a little while. to do colors. noises until I started filming. So a little backstory. I've been working on this dress for four days now, technically only for one full day, but the three other days that I was doing it, one was travel time to get here, and then I cut out all the pattern pieces. Then the next day I spent hours trying to get this to work. And because we're in the winter time and there's not much sun, the filming wouldn't have been good to have it all pieced together. So then I said, you know what? I'm just gonna start it again tomorrow. I can just turn the camera on tomorrow and it'll be fine. And I'll have all day to do it. Got up in the morning, got dressed, got ready to film, started sewing and all the tension was off again. No idea what happened, no idea why. Obviously this machine was purchased in 1939, but I don't know when it was actually made. So it's a very old machine. So I guess maybe just shutting it off, things change, I, I have no idea. But it didn't hold the tension that I had set it to. So then I had to fiddle around with it for almost another three hours. And then it started getting dark again. I brought out some lighting and I just said, screw it. And I just went with it. The other thing about this pattern is most of the dress isn't, you know, you sew everything right side together and then you flip it inside out so there's no seams. Most of this dress is one surface and then the top surface, you have to press in your seam allowance and then you lay it over top and then you do a top stitch. So a lot of the dress is only held together by a top stitch. Oh my God, the sound, it's gone. And I also don't really know, and I don't think you can, you can't back stitch, so you can't reinforce your stitches. Everything that you do the very first run is basically your stitch. Another thing that went wrong, I brought a unopened black spool. So as I was going along with this spool, I have a picture of it, which I'll show. Halfway through, it changed from black to silver. I've never seen that happen before. I'm not sure if it's a common thing, so you'll have to let me know in the comments. But I didn't know that could happen. And then I ran into the biggest row bump last night. The mistake was mine, but it's also not very clear in the directions. On the pattern, you can see at the very top, there's 
these big swoops. On the pattern pieces, it's called pocket. So I just thought that's what they were calling it. Nowhere in the directions, nowhere on the envelope, does it say anything about there being a pocket. So I just thought they were calling those swan neck things pockets because they are just the rounded shape. They weren't calling the swan neck a pocket. It is a pocket. And I know this is probably just a stupid thing in my brain that like, but it didn't mention that there was actually a pocket and who puts a pocket all the way up here, almost at your collarbones. Nothing was working. It wasn't laying properly and it says to baste. So in my head, being a modern sewer, I guess, I used the machine to do a baste and then it went through to the other side, obviously. So then you could see it on the swan necks, which you're not supposed to. So then, you know, I realized, oh, I'm supposed to hand baste it on just the one side because it, <sighs> I kept taking the cutouts and placing it on top to try to match up where the pocket was supposed to go. And it wasn't matching up. One side was perfect, the other side, and I cut them back to back. So they're, they were the same size. They were exactly the same size. They're sewn the same way. I had to take the collar apart four times and finally I got it right. I was, it was just not a good thing. It was terrible. And there was no like way I was going to put a camera on while I was doing it because I was just, I almost just said, you know what? I can't do this dress. I looked up online to see if there was anybody else who has done this dress before, which is something I don't normally do because I like to figure things out on my own, but I was ready to give up and I'm not somebody to give up. I spent two days trying to fix this machine to make sure it was gonna work. There was no way I was going to let two things on the dress stop me from doing the whole dress. And there was a blog post from, I think it was like eight years ago and it's a blog post. So honestly, it didn't go into any detail about what you're supposed to do. It didn't really give any direction or help of anything but it had one thing that just made it click in my head that it was a legitimate pocket because I couldn't understand. I didn't even think a pocket meant pocket. I don't know why. It's for a handkerchief. They're handkerchief pockets. So that's why it's so tiny. The pocket is literally a triangle like this big. So that's why, like for me, who, why do you need a little pocket that's this big? It all made sense. Since there isn't really a video or anything of how people do this dress, I'm gonna try to document exactly what I'm doing. So if somebody does this pattern, hopefully they'll find this video and they can understand what I did to make it work, if it works. Okay, so this is the top of the dress. This is the front facing that you lay over top and then you're supposed to do a top stitch all around. So there's another swan neck at the hip. It goes over top of the belt all the way up so this is that swan neck I was talking about. What I've done is I've pressed everything as absolute flat as I can. And I made sure that you can't see any of the black velvet underneath. So it's pressed and then I've pinned the crap out of it. It looks like pinhead because I want to make sure nothing moves. So whenever I stitch this over top, it's as flat as possible and you can't see anything. So the problem I had is underneath here. So this little triangle, is the pocket. So what you're supposed to do is do a top stitch just on this one from this corner edge to about up here. This is where you can slide in and grab your handkerchief, but this is not supposed to be attached, which I don't know, like I feel like it's just gonna fall over anyways. So I'm going to do it and leave a tiny gap so it's technically there and it's still the same as the pattern, but I don't think I'm ever actually going to use it, so I'm not gonna worry too much about it. Flipped over, this is supposed to stitch. You're supposed to baste it along here so it sits here and it's attached. So anyways, we figured out this is a pocket. I'm an idiot, moving on. So everything is completely flat and pinned, so now all I have to do is basically top stitch around here. And I've also pinned exactly where my 5 8 seam allowance is. So whenever I lay this over top, I'm basically now going to pin it all where the seam allowance is to make sure it's exactly where it's supposed to go instead of my normal eyeballing it because I'm sick of making mistakes and I just, I need this to work. This actually flips over and there you have the swan neck where your armhole is. It's actually very high up. Like that's the shoulder seam there. So it's pretty high up and then this lays over and that's your collar, and then you'll have your buttons right along here. The other thing that's wonderful about this, I don't have my dress form, so I haven't been able to try any of this on yet, so I don't even know if it's going to fit. We're having fun, right? Yeah, this is uh, definitely what the feeling of Christmas is, stress. I found 
found the easiest way to make sure everything was measured accurately was to start pinning from the gooseneck right below the belt. Then once this is in the correct position, you can pull everything up. I found I was starting at the top and working my way down and the gooseneck where I thought it should go is actually way higher. <laughs> I think I concede. <laughs> the dress has won. I give up. So I put the swan neck front facing things together onto the dress. Put it on. One was here, one was up here, which is fine. You know, just drop one down a little bit, bring one up a little bit, no problem. But the dress doesn't fit. It won't close. It fits everywhere but my bust. And I went inside because I did French seam. So I'm like, maybe I just made the seams too big. And I measured every seam all over the dress, even the bottom, just to make sure. Everything was five eighths, absolutely everything, which means I either cut things too small but I checked the pattern pieces and I cut them exactly where my size was on every single one. I have no idea. So then I was like, okay, take out the seams on the sides, start over basically. So I took off the swan neck things, ripped one side down, made it even smaller. And then as I was going up to clip the phrase, I snipped into the back of the dress and my brain exploded. So I think it's just, <laughs> The sewing god's telling me that I'm not gonna get this dress. I really just wanna light it on fire. Like that's what I feel like right now. I don't know. I could keep bitching about it, but it's not gonna help. It would have looked really pretty if it would have actually turned out. I really like what it could have looked like. I don't know if I even like checkers anymore, which is my one of my favorite patterns. And I don't think I wanna make a checkered dress for a long time. So the dress wins, 1939 wins, 1939 sewing machine wins, I give up, I'm done. If I decide that, you know, things are working out and I mentally want to keep going, I'll put that in the description to look out for the video on Friday. If I don't and I end up burning this dress in a dumpster, that will be Friday's video. I guess on a positive note, the back of the dress looks beautiful. It fits perfectly on the back. My sides align where they're supposed to. It's just something with these freaking swan things that is not making the dress fit in the front, the back, the shoulders. It looks so nice. I guess I will say this now. Thank you so much for watching. <laughs> I am sorry that I did not complete the dress. I will let you know in the description if there will be a part two. I don't know if I hope you enjoyed this video. I guess it's good to see that people fail and not everything that sewers do is perfect. I could just delete all this footage and skip Monday and go into my regular one next week, but I kind of wanted to show that it doesn't always work out and sewing isn't as easy as it looks on YouTube and sometimes it just doesn't work out. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you did kind of like this. Please subscribe. Vogue 9127 beat me today. You win, you always do. I will let you know in the description if I decide to continue on with the dress. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video.